Hey, guys, look at that. This is a wood-fired oven here. I am in Port Angeles, Washington at my parents' house. Yes, my dad made this with his friend, and we are going to cook in it here today. But look at what we've got ready. Oh, boy. What we're going to cook in here today is a delicious Dutch oven dinner and a surprise dessert. Let's get cooking. Oh, Can you yeah. hear that? Can you smell that? Oh yeah, that, there's a big difference there. That's great. <laughs> oh wow. Hey yo, Chef Corso, Outdoor Eats. I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks. If you're going hiking, backpacking, base camp cooking, wherever you're going outdoors, I want you to be able to eat well. So we are doing base camp cooking here today. This isn't necessarily a backpacking recipe, so don't leave me a comment that says you can't do this backpacking. Yeah, this is, this is not what we're doing. We have a big wood fire here and a beautiful fire that's been cooking for the last couple hours. And sometimes that is the best and greatest option to be able to cook in. But I have a special guest here today. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my dad, everybody. Hi. Thanks, Dad. You may remember him from such previous videos as we went for a hike a couple years ago in the Olympic National Park. We had a really good time. We did. It was a tough time, but it was a very good time. We did. And then a couple uh, seasons ago, we made a great recipe together. Do you remember what we made? I, uh, it was uh, brie with bacon or something. Bacon and brie did. It, it was incredible. It was so good. And we cooked it in a Swedish fire log. So if you want to watch either one of those recipes, you can check them out in the link below. Add them to your watch list, but don't watch them now because you want to see what we're going to put in You here. really do. Yep. Yeah. So what we're making, do, do you, I think I told you what we're making, but we are making a braised chicken dish here today, and we are making a Spanish braised chicken. And it's a really good thing too. And the, uh, the Blue Jays are really glad that it's chicken too. It's uh, winter time and they are all out trying to eat some of the really good things that I have for them. And they're glad they're not a chicken today. Yeah, mm, yeah we've got a bunch of birds and bird feeders over here behind the camera here. Yep. But we are focusing on the oven. So how long has this oven been here? The oven's been here. We've, uh, we built it uh, together with a bunch of friends uh, about 10 years ago. We got a great plan and uh, it's built for stout. I mean, you can really, uh, you can, really enjoy it. We, we've done so many different things in a wood-fired oven, and I hope you guys have, have even smaller varieties that you can use all the time. You can use them for not just pizzas, but you can use them for anything. They're wonderful. And so the thing that uh, I really enjoy about this, and so yes, you can cook pizza in here, and we have done Absolutely. that before, but the thing about this is with uh, how big this is and how thick this is, the, 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 the deck doesn't necessarily get to that 900 to 1,000 degrees, right. so you can cook pizza in here but this is actually a really good uh, cooking oven for braises and roasts and some breads. We've done turkeys in here, we've done salmon, uh, if you're a vegetarian we've done portobellos, uh, we can just do so many different things. They're, they're great. So if you do have a pizza oven at home, keep cooking pizza but then maybe you can roast yep. some vegetables in there and maybe cook something else than just pizza. That's right. This fire has been rolling for a few hours and we don't necessarily, again, want it to be in 900 or 1000 degrees, but we do want it to be a nice roasting temperature. So we've got uh, some nice coals and what we're gonna do together is we're gonna push some of our, our wood and our coals to the side so we can have some really nice area to be able to cook in. There you go. So let's do that. Let's get going. And one of the things here too, Steve, not only are we cooking from below, but we're cooking with convection too. So things get really, really nicely browned and roasted. Yeah, I love the, the, the rustic flavor this, this gets. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, that looks wonderful. So our fire is all ready for our ingredients. So let's take a look at what we're going to cook today. For our Spanish chicken here this evening, we just have a few easy ingredients that are really, really easy to shop for, and one special ingredient, which I'll talk about in a second, on why it's really, really important that you get it. And when I was thinking about a recipe for cooking in this awesome oven, you know, again, I've cooked some really, really good things in here, some chilies, some beef stews, and those kind of things. But I wanted to do something a little bit different for you guys, but also something that wasn't super, super hard. So thinking about chicken thighs, really, really available, braise up in about an hour. And also, I'm pretty sure you guys have made a chicken chili verde, you have made a chicken cacciatore before, those are great recipes. But I want something just a little bit different to see if you wanted to try something new 
First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop up our veggies and put them on a sheet tray because I wanna roast them before we put them in our pot. So just gonna do a quick little rough chop on two onions and two red bell peppers. Nothing super fancy here, just a nice rough chop of our onions. And then quick rough chop of our peppers and cut them down the side so you have your core all ready for your compost bag or pack out bag. So Steve, why are we uh, roasting these and not just putting them all in and fresh? Yeah, that's a, a good question. For this specific recipe, and especially with our nice rustic oven and heat behind us, I want to get that roasted pepper and roasted onion flavor to add to our pot. You can definitely just chop them, throw them in there, it's going to be just fine. But we're looking to add layers of flavor to our pot here. and having those roasted notes, I think is gonna be really complimentary to the rest of our ingredients. Steve, are you gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper on this maybe, or? Yeah, I'm gonna season them up. I've got oh, a little okay. bit of oil here. And some salt and pepper. So that sounds pretty simple. Pretty darn simple so far. Awesome. And what I like to do is put a grate, I actually learned this from you, from your experience in here. So it's elevated and we're not putting our pan right on the coals. And that's really important because we don't want the uh, everything roasted from below. We want a nice convection and smoke note. Absolutely. So I think also I'm gonna add, as far as temperature, what I'm feeling in here, it is warm, but as you can see, my hand is still in there and I'm still alive, so that's good. But we are probably at a good four to 600 degrees, which is nice, but I wanna make sure that our heat is gonna be consistent through our whole cook here, so I'm gonna throw another piece of wood on the side. Having a little bit of wood on both sides there just sort of gets the convection going. Nice. Okay. So we'll check on that in a few minutes. Here we go. A reminder for our veggies, we have two onions, two bell peppers, we have oil, salt and pepper, and the other ingredients for our, our pot here, we have just have some granulated garlic. You can definitely use fresh garlic too if you want. We're going for the easy route here today. We have apple cider vinegar, and we have the star of the show, smoked paprika. Yes, smoked paprika, this is gonna be, you know, we're, we're trying to get a layer of roasted flavor here on our vegetables but I also want some smokiness and some really great Spanish flavor to add to our pot. So I thought paprika was just sort of paprika. Well, paprika is paprika, and the paprika we get here in the United States is pretty boring. It's basically just color. It has hardly any flavor. So yes, you can add regular paprika here, but it's gonna give you nothing of, of note, nothing of excitement. So spend a little bit of money Smoked paprika is available at a lot of different grocery stores these days, but take the time, get it, and it'll be really, really tasty. Ooh, geez, that's really tough. Really, really tasty in our pot here. And why don't you come on in and take a look at exactly what this looks like. So it does look like the paprika that's probably in your cupboard right now. Can I smell it? Sure. Oh yeah, that, there's a big difference there. That's great. And you might be thinking like, oh man, I got a special ingredient I gotta go to buy that I'm never gonna use again. Ah, not so, this goes great in chili too. So if you are a big chili pot fella, watching football, eating chili in the fall and the winter, throw this in your chili. Thank you later. So, so good. And the last ingredient we have in here, besides, you know, we have a, just a classic package of chicken thighs, is some wine. You can use some beer, 
You can use some white wine if you like. We are using red wine here today. One thing you don't know about my dad is that he is a winemaker. And he has been a winemaker and an excellent winemaker for over 30 years. And he made this. So while our veggies are roasting and while we're waiting to get our pot into the oven, we're going to have a little sip of wine and we're going to learn a little bit more about the winery. Veggies are smelling really, really good in there already. It's only been there for like 10 minutes. They're really, really good. You can see a little bit of smoke coming out there. That smoke is permeating the, uh, the veggies. It's going to be really good. So for talking about the wine here, so this is Storm King Red. And again, you've been a winemaker for as long as I've known you. You're my dad. <laughs> um, but does all the wine come in a bag like this? No, it doesn't. Uh, uh, we make a lot of different wines here at Camaraderie Cellars here in Washington State. And uh, we made this specifically because we are right in the backyard or <laughs> the, the Olympic National Park is in our backyard. And uh, they don't like having glass. In fact, they really prefer you don't have any glass in the park for safety reasons and uh, garbage reasons and all. And uh, so we made it specifically for, uh, for campers to go on up there and enjoy. So hikers, backpackers, campers, but also if you own a boat, you don't want glass on the boat. If you just need something easy to throw in your rig for the car camp situation, there's two bottles of wine in here which is amazing. So it can fit right in your backpack or fit right in your cooler or uh, in, your, in your rig. Uh, we named this uh, wine Storm King Red because it's named for a, a marvelous, marvelous hike uh, near Lake Crescent, which is only about uh, half an hour away from here on the beautiful North Olympic Peninsula. Uh, Storm King is a peak. In fact, it's sort of shown here on the front uh, with our designer. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful and uh, really represents uh, uh, sort of the, the, the rugged outdoors, but also having a nice time with a, with a sip of good wine on your trail. Absolutely. Well, and we've done Storm King together. It's one of the best day hikes in Washington, arguably one of the best day hikes in the country. So if you are visiting this area, definitely do Storm King. Maybe you want to take some Storm King up Storm King. You uh, could do that. Well, we've been talking a lot. I think we need some, seem to need a little sip of wine. Okay. Um, we I think I forgot the glasses. Oh, gosh. I know. Okay. I, I went through the checklist. I thought I had everything. Okay. I always forget something. Well, there's only a way to cure this. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good to sip and savor, savor and don't have it up your nose. Okay. <laughs> Can I have some? You want some? I want some. Hey, watch this. Uh -huh. mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, slap that okay. bag. Mm. Okay. We don't do that with bottles. You just do it with bags. <laughs> mm. Really, really good. I can't wait to put that in that pot there. It's going to be really good. So this has some Cabernet Sauvignon in it, which you'd expect. But it also has some Dolcetto, which is a wonderful uh, wine from the uh, northern, uh, northern Italian area, the Piedmont. Um, also uh, some Tempranillo and some Cabernet Franc. We're really well known for Cabernet Franc. And it's, it's very tasty all together. Ooh, I can hear that fire going. Nice. Well, and also, so speaking of this in a bag, but off, most of the wine that Carotteri Cellars produce does come in a normal bottle. Yeah. Um, but you were mentioning that the Tempranillo or Malbec that, that you make would also go really, really well in this pot. It'll go really well because those are, are nice Mediterranean flavors and uh, it goes uh, really well. By the way, we also have some uh, Sangiovese, which could go mm. in there too, some Grenache, uh, lots of different things that Washington is uh, really well known for. There, pretty much there's not a bad bottle here. So uh, details in the, the, the show notes below if you want to get this bag or get some bottles. Uh, we can't ship to every single state in the country because of old liquor laws, Yeah, but some you can, or if you're just visiting Washington, check it out. It's a limited production kind of a thing, and uh, we'd love to send you some. Uh, we say that we make wines to go with the meal uh, and not just opening the mail, and uh, this is a good example of that. Yeah, so I think it's, we need to check on those, those veggies. I think so. Oh, Can you yeah. hear that? Can you smell that? That is starting to look really, oh, really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna need to stir these up here a little bit. We're getting a nice roast on the bottom. Nice. But some nice smoke flavor on the top too. In fact, I'm gonna just change my my glove here a little bit. <laughs> now I have a backward glove. Awesome. So I think we only need about five more minutes in yeah. 
because we don't want them to die, but we definitely want to get them a little caramelized and roasted. And I think they're doing a good job there. The onions are getting a little bit more transparent, which is perfect. Nice. Okay, here we go. Back in, you guys. Time to check the veggies. I think they're done. Smelling really, really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Nice and roasted. So, again, you can throw these just right in the pot if you want to, but this is flavor, and that's a great first step to adding some great flavor to our pot. So the other thing I'm gonna do is take this grate out of here. We don't need that anymore. And I want to preheat my Dutch oven. that back in there, tend my fire, go. And this preheat step is another one you don't have to have to do. You could just throw the raw chicken in there with the veggies and the wine and the other ingredients, gonna be fine. But I just like getting it nice and warm and that way we get a little bit of a sear and some uh, another layer of flavor on our chicken. There you go. Look at that. Mm. Your daddy want one piece? Yeah. Mmm. Wow. That wood smoke in there is absolutely delicious. So I just have a about a pound, pound and a half package of boneless chicken thighs. I don't necessarily suggest you use uh, chicken breasts for this. When you braise chicken breasts, they just tend to get pretty dry. They will eventually pull and break apart. It's just not the best, best cut for, for, for this recipe. You could also just throw a whole chicken in there. That could work too. Didn't take long for our pot to preheat in a really, really hot oven. So getting that out. Gonna add a little bit of oil. There we go. So chicken in the pot, nice and preheated. Adding our roasted veggies. Could also do some carrot and sweet potato, maybe a fennel bulb if you want and get a little bit fancy. Gonna add some garlic powder. A little bit of apple cider vinegar and a good dose of Storm King. And you want to get the moisture level, water level, wine level, just about to the level of your ingredients. We're not trying to make a stew here or a soup, we're trying to make a braise, but we need enough moisture in there so it doesn't dry out as it is roasting. And I think, you know, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. I just added some chicken in there. You can always add more salt later. I think that'll be all right. Put a lid on it. And let's get this back in oven. And one little tip here, as you're pushing this back, I've had actually made this mistake, is to push, it. if you push at the top, it's gonna tip over. So always push from the bottom or use a piece of firewood or your poking apparatus to push it from the bottom. You wanna get it back in there. Nice surrounding heat. And this should take about an hour to braise at this temperature. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. We'll check it out. And the thing about this recipe too is why I like it. It's very, very versatile. You could also use pork butt. And if you are using pork butt, it's probably gonna take around two to four hours depending on the size of your chunks. And so you can make this Spanish pork as well if you don't wanna do the chicken. But I love having uh, some, some braised chicken recipes in the old pantry and in the old quiver because they usually take about an hour and turn out to be really, really good. We're gonna check back on this in a little bit, but we're gonna go drink some wine.
Um, remind me on how the, the name came about, Carbottery Cellars? Well, we started making wine with a whole lot of friends. And uh, uh, one of our good friends who was an English professor thought that uh, name camaraderie would be a good one for us uh, because we were into fellowship, we were into having good times together, and uh, the name stuck. And it was, it's been now for 32 vintages that we've been doing that. And our motto really along the whole line has been the best things in life are meant to be shared. And I think you're carrying on that legacy of, of carrying on the best things in life and they're meant to be shared whether you're on the trail or in a nice winery or, or in your home or backyard. Yeah, but I remember when I was uh, probably eight years old, we had a, uh, a house, we lived in a house um, <laughs> in Redmond, Washington, and we had a small wine press about this big. Yeah. It was actually an old apple press, as I remember. It was. And I remember coming down in my pajamas, and the, the you and your friends were making wine in the garage. We were. We are. It, that's called being a garagist. And uh, that's true. And uh, that goes back into the 1980s. And uh, that's the way a lot of us winemakers started uh, back in those days. When we started our winery in 92, there were uh, there were only about 60 or so wineries in the entire state, and now there's over 1,060, uh, which, uh, which is quite a few. And we're really proud that uh, we were Heritage Winery of the Year just last year for the whole state. So we hope that you'll come and visit us sometime when you want to come up to the uh, to the uh, Olympic Peninsula and do some extraordinary world-class hiking. For sure. Well, and what I love about the wine style uh, that that you are producing is that it's very food friendly. It's it's really really tasty. It's very economically priced too, um, and it's not foo foo. It's not fancy. We don't have pillars here at the winery. You're a great gardener. Uh, you've created a really really good space just to hang out by a fire pit, have a really nice glass of wine. Where well, there's a lot of other wineries out there that are just really, really fancy. They charge you $100 for a tasting fee, and that's just not our style. Yeah, it's not our style, and uh, uh, I think that's uh, part of the uh, hospitality, the notion of camaraderie that the best things are in life are meant to be uh, shared, and uh, we really uh, we really believe that. Yeah. Well, and other things for, for my history and our history, of like we, we cook together. I mean, we, we didn't cook together every night, but you know, there would be Friday nights where you and I would cook steak and roast potatoes. And um, I always cooked with my parents and my grandparents, and that's how I started cooking and so how I started really enjoying food, but also like the combination of wine and food and flavors was you, you, you know, planted a lot of those seeds really, really early and on. And your grandpa Emery was, a, uh, was a, uh, a cook in the Navy during World War II and ended up being the chef for the entire uh, Naval Hospital in, in San Francisco and would uh, would later on in life barbecue 40,000 pounds of beef a year. So I, I think you got it pretty uh, pretty honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm following along in some, some yeah, good, good yeah. food and hospitality. You, you can't help yourself, yeah. No, but I love it. It's 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 fun. It's tasty. It's good. Uh, speaking of that, I forgot that we're gonna make dessert too. Oh, that's right. Yep. So our our chicken pot <clears throat> is in there, but we need to prep our our dessert. And you actually had this idea, so we're gonna work on this together. Yeah, that'll be great. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna put this glass down. I don't want. I want to drink it myself rather than have you pour it in. Okay. <laughs> For our surprise dessert, we are still keeping it really easy and really basic. I've never actually tried this recipe, but uh, we're gonna try it here together to see if it's uh, a good idea. For car camping desserts, you know, it's s'mores, it's throwing the stuffed banana with the marshmallows and the chocolate chips into the into the fire wrapped in foil, or, you know, you can burrow out the orange and put the, the uh, cake mix in there. Like, all of those are classic and keep doing those. What I wanna do is see if we can take that same concept and do baked apples. So I have a couple apples here and a little bit of foil and a few ingredients, and we're gonna see if we can kind of stuff them with some flavor and roast them in the coals to get a very interesting, hopefully tasty dessert. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quarter them. And I'm specifically cutting them in quarters and not just coring them because I want a little bit more surface area to be able to put our ingredients and I think also it's going to help in our overall cooking time so you don't just have this big apple in there that could take multiple minutes and kind of a long time to to bake so again I'm kind of workshopping this here for a little bit of brown sugar 
Got some cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. And let's wrap that up. So that's option one. Super basic, brown sugar and spice. Softball, apple. But then I also have some nuts and some craisins here, which I'm curious to see how those taste. And Dad, this was actually your idea uh, the other night when we were talking about what to make in the oven. You threw out the idea of baked apples. I love good baked apples. And, and this is sort of the time of year in which we still in Washington State have some beautiful ones around. Uh, Washington State's the, the largest producer of, of apples in the United States, as a matter of fact. And we make a, or grow a lot of different kinds. And this is going to be really, really yummy after that marvelous main course you've been making. Well, and I think too that speaking of varieties is really experimenting with some different varieties of apples and which one's going to taste the best, which one's going to break down. So we get kind of the flavor that we want, but it oh, also you're putting some pecans in there. Pecans and craisins. I'm staying uh. away from raisins because I know a lot of you think the raisins are the devil, but raisins could also work in here too. All right, wrapping that up as well. And we need to wrap that up all the way around so it doesn't uh, dry out or the juices come out. Yeah, for sure. But again, we are, we're trying this for the first time. We'll see how this, how this turns out. Okay, we got one more apple. What are you gonna do? Oh man. Uh, I got an idea for this one. Oh, that one might cook a little faster, do you think? I think it might cook a little faster. But maybe that is going to be a good thing. We'll just have to check them. Yeah. Ooh, we might have to check them. Apple au vin. Well, that's going to be fun just to, to, to see how that turns out. Yeah, we are really trying new stuff here in the wood-fired oven. So, Dad, if you want to help me uh, throw these in the oven too, and then we can go chill for a little bit. Okay. And uh, hopefully our, our chicken will be done in, a, you know, about a half hour or so. I think that'll be great. Okay, I'm looking for just the right spot here. In fact, where's our thingy? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna move some of these coals around here, make it a little bit easier for us. Oh yeah. I found a couple perfect places. Okay, you ready? Oh, we're ready. Okay, we're gonna roll them buggers in there. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to put this one over here on this side. Oh man, I'm excited for the big pot there, but I am really curious about these baked apples too. Nice, great job. Okay, I'm going to put this back on to conserve the heat. Chicken has been in here for about 45 minutes and you know, I, I like checking things early because if it turns out it's done, that's great. If you check it at an hour, hour 15, and it's been burned, then there goes your dinner, and that's not fun. So, it's been about 45 minutes. Let's check out our big old cauldron in there. Oh, yeah. Pulling that out. Yeah, Dad, get in there. Wow. Ooh. Nice stir. Let's take this over to the table and really give this a nice try. Wow. Nice and bubbling. 
Wow, that is smelling fantastic. We've got the color of the wine, color of the peppers, color of the smoked paprika. And our chicken is nicely cooked and braised. So about 45 minutes for this specific batch. You know, not too big of a batch. We have a really, really hot oven. It really only took about 45 minutes. You know, for your oven, your pot, your batch, the time and the temperature is going to, to vary. But again, I like to check it a little bit early just to make sure everything's going okay. And, mm, oh man, smoky, rustic, a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there, complimenting everything really, really nice. And so what I will say, we something we didn't do on camera is that I checked it at about 20 minutes or so. So I'm filming something here and I don't wanna burn it here for, for, for you and for me and for my dad. So I noticed that it was getting a little bit dry with our high heat in here. So I added about two cups of water just to thin it out. You can use chicken stock too if you want, um, or some more wine or beer, whatever whatever you have handy. And you can adjust the tastings too, or the seasonings if you need to. Absolutely. But man, this is looking really, really great. And some things you could serve this with is maybe some couscous, um, some light little pasta, some smashed potatoes. Uh, some rice, wild rice, that could be really, really good. So choose your own adventure, or you could just have it like this. Oh, look at that sauce. I'm going for rice on this tonight. I'm just gonna go for some of the soup. Really, really good. Really tasty. Awesome. Mm. Yum. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good for dinner. Really good. Well, while I've got you here, you want to uh, pull an apple packet out of there? Oh, yeah, we should check those. <laughs> Is that hot, too? Yeah, it's hot potato. Oh, you got some juices coming out of that one, too. Ooh, that means it's done. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, well... Should we open them up and see I, what they're like? I think like? we should open them up. I mean, we just had Christmas, but I don't know. No, let's hold on to that one because that's oh. like a real wild card one with the oh, white okay. wine in it. Oh, okay. So let's see what we've got in oh, there. Oh, 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 yeah. So um, if you pull that open all the way so we can see it. Oh my goodness. So well, that is the one with the spices and the pecans and craisins. Beautiful. Oh yeah, nice. And um, for everyone watching, can you give it a poke with the knife just to see how soft they are? Ooh. Yeah. And they aren't actually the, because they're a little bit bigger piece of that could have gone a little bit longer, but it's okay. going to be just oh that's just perfect. So that's a, a, another thing to have uniform slicing. Well, uniform slicing too, but I think there's some variability yeah. on the the heat in the in the oven there. That's so, true too. So one one side may be a little bit hotter. Yeah. That makes it just all the more rustic, and I love that texture differences yeah. too. That apple, cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice is smelling great. Oh yeah. Ooh. Wow. Oh, look at that nice juice. Can you see that? Sure can. Wow. Ooh my. So yeah, I wanted to uh, dig into that one and see what it tastes like. Ooh. Okay. Oh, this is okay. Because of the extra moisture, this is really, really nice. Well, nice. I think there's a couple of factors there. Is one, they're, they're smaller pieces that cook faster. Uh, and and that, that is an opal apple, which ah. is a softer apple, which cooks cooks down more than some of the other eating There apples. you go. Here we go. Verdict? It's really good. <laughs> nice. Must be the wine. Must be the wine in there for sure. Uh, try the one with the, the nuts and the craisins mm. in there. Maybe get a combo bite. These pecans, and you got these as fresh ones, didn't you? Yeah, I ordered them special from New Mexico. I'll be darned. I know. Are they sort of like crossed with a hatch chili or anything? <laughs> they're not spicy nuts. Oh, no, okay, they aren't, okay. They're, they're hot nuts, but not that kind of hot nuts. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going for, in for this one if I can. I'm just gonna grab it, I think, with my fingers. Yeah, we're cork up to that side. You can even pick up a little bit of the pecan. Cool. 
no. Nice. Well, are you happy with your your new uh, trail meal campfire dessert yeah. dessert idea? We should do this. Oh, I think that's pretty good. You know, I'm I'm excited for everyone to try these and throw some other mm. other flavors in there, other chocolates in there. But it seems like in about how long were those apples in there? About forty five. Forty five. Well, we put. I think they're probably about a half an hour. Okay, somewhere in there. But but they were in different kinds of uh, of heat too. So yeah. For, wow. Smells good. Oh, wow, huh? it smells really good. Yeah, I can try these out. Mm. And this shouldn't be just for a holiday kind of thing. This could be mm, just, for just spectacular. Apple, yeah, dessert apple a day keeps somebody away. Somebody away. Yeah. Mm. Get one that's so soaked in wine there. And the cinnamon, you just can't beat cinnamon or an apple. Super, super good. Mm. Get a little bit of craisin in there. Mm. Mm. Well, really great idea. And I'm glad we workshopped it together. But thank you for cooking with me. It's all, always, always great to cook with you. I'm really glad to. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a very good dinner and a very good dessert tonight. Um, and some nice wine, too. And some nice wine. But thanks for coming along, for cooking with my dad, cooking with this beautiful wood-fired oven. Again, you don't have to have this big oven to be able to cook any of this. You can cook this in a regular oven, in a regular pot. But if you do have the time, and the desire to be able to cook a really nice meal in a Dutch oven while you're sitting at camp, you can have a really great Dutch oven dinner. There's one person we've forgotten. Who's that? That's mom. Oh yeah, well, she's doing something. She's doing something. <laughs> she, without mom, there is no winery. And uh, she has so much cooking experience too. But we've just saved her from having to cook tonight. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I also cooked with my mom. I cooked with her, cooked with you guys, cooked, cooked with everybody. So um, so we're definitely gonna share this with mom tonight too. But to get out there, cook something amazing, somewhere awesome. Boca boca. And I have a special guest here today. Come on. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Works for you. Fingers are very, very good too. Mm. <laughs> Fingers are tasty. Vintage. Too. <laughs> yeah. Stuff could be a Nothing really, like really... it. Damn. Almost yeah. had it. I'm sorry. We're playing tennis. Oh yeah. You, know, you want to try it? It's hot. Is it hot? I'm giving it back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. well, maybe I'll try it.